This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hello, Antigua Barbuda and the rest of the world. Welcome again to another in the series, Mastering Mathematics. This is Karen Weston, and this is a program sponsored by the Ministry of Education in conjunction with its EBU unit, Mastering Mathematics for the Center for Mathematics Education and ABS Television. Today, this is our last program for the term. Can you imagine a term has gone so quickly? And that is why we say to students, you get to school, you should be all ears and eyes and in contact with your teachers and those students who and your friends who are going to make certain that you're going to accomplish the tasks for which you are sent to school. Yes, we cannot afford to waste time. So today, we also want to get in a lot of things quickly because we're going to send you home for your Christmas vacation as we welcome in the Christ child into our lives and into this Antigua Barbuda. Just before we start, I want to tell you again, and this was said by Emile Zula in 1840-1902, and it says, the only interest in living comes from believing in life from loving life and using all the power of your intelligence to know it better let us say it again the only interest in living comes from believing in life from loving life and using all the power of your intelligence to know it better so those parents, those aunts, those uncles, and those fathers who are still going after mathematics now and saying, in my old age, that's when I'm learning mathematics, you are doing the right thing, okay? Again, the strength of a nation comes from the integrity of the homes. And if we can generate that spirit of wanting to learn amongst our students before they get into the classrooms, then we're going to make Antigua a better nation. And when it comes to mathematics, we must start to put ourselves among the top schools, the top educational systems of this world. That is what we are hoping to do on these programs. All right, so you will remember the last time I had the students from Parham Primary School here with me. And we took a break from our fractions because we wanted to go to show you how we're going to be learning tables. And I'm sure by now you can pick up your own patterns at home to say that you will be giving them the five and the tens to go together. Students daily or hardly ever have trouble learning the 11 times table. And we put again with them the nine times table, challenge them and ask them what is the relationship with the nine times table in relation to three, the three times table. All right, the seven times table I see stands on its own. I'm still going to be working out a pattern that we can make it exciting. Apart from that, check your children and see what they like and try giving them those tables to learn as a part of the play in the area in which you feel you can relate to them and they can have fun. I can tell you, I just took one, I know that some students that I look after, they like to come walking with me with my little dog, Snowden. So what do we do? We go walking. But in that walking, for a certain distance, they must know the tables from here to there, from here to there. And by the time you're finished, you'll be surprised and see that at the end of that walk, they would have known a whole table and you wouldn't even believe it. Let them have fun when it's time to learn. Do not make it a drudgery. Why did I want them to learn these tables so badly? Because I want to show you something today that we have been saying all the time for multiplication of fractions. What do we do? It is numerator times numerator over our denominator times our denominator. Today, we want you to look at an alternative method, all right? And it is called where we can cancel first 
before we get into this aspect of numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator because there's going to come a time when we do that multiplication and it is so large so what we do all the time is try to keep the numbers very small and in order to do that we talk about cancelling so what is miss weston talking about and here it is we have our first sum coming up and it says 3 over 4 times 1 and 7 over 9. I remember one of my colleagues saying something about it. Oh, she said sum. Yes, sum does not only mean that when we add and we get a total. When I went to school, all they told me about do the sums. And it still works for today. That word has not gone out of our vocabulary. All right, so here... So instead of saying all the time, this is the problem. If they say this is the sum, that's all right. So what are we going to do? Again, we look and what do we have here? We have a mixed fraction. And anytime we're going to be doing multiplication, we want to get it in that sort of fashion where we can say numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator. So we're going to change our mixed fraction into an improper fraction so from here we would be saying this is now equal to three quarters and it is times nine ones are nine again let's go slowly the multiplication denominator with whole number and we add the numerator so again for those who forgot don't forget that it is the denominator times the whole number and we add the numerator. So we are saying nine ones, t nine times one would give you nine and plus seven. So we would be getting 16 over nine. 16 over nine. All right. Now, here comes the cancelling. When we talk about cancelling, in terms of fraction, it is always going numerator over denominator. So we can cancel a number from the numerator using the same multiple with a number from the denominator. Or again, it, if we have two terms, you can have times numerator 1 over denominator 1. And the cancelling can take place. It is always matched up with numerator and denominator. So we can go in an X position. So we can go here and it can be this numerator cancel with this denominator. So again, I can, I'm saying that the cancelling can take place in a cross fashion where we can have this numerator cancelling with that denominator okay also oh, this is where we're going here or we can choose to go this numerator with this denominator but the cancelling must always take place with numerator and denominator so it cannot be numerator numerator neither can it be denominator denominator so it is vertically and diagonally that is how we're doing our cancelling so again if we use numbers i could so here we have numbers let us tell you first of all what are we looking at we have a numerator which is three we have a denominator which is nine and we say we can use the same multiple to cancel these two numbers. And that multiple would be 3. So we can say 3 into 3. So this is divided by 3. And this is also divided by 3. Okay. So then we're saying 3 into 3 here goes once. And 3 into this 9 goes 3 times. Let us show you that again. The multiple, okay, must be the same. So we are saying, which multiple are we going to use to cancel the 3 and the 9? And it is 3. 
So we're going with our multiple choice or with our multiplication tables and saying three divided by three. If we have three things and we want to form a group of three, so many groups of threes can we get out of three things and it's only one. If we have nine things and we wanted to get groups of threes, how many can we get out of it? And it is three. And we know our tables, so we can be saying three times what would have given us nine. And right away, because we are getting versatile with them, now we can say it is three. So that is where we are. And then we look, can we cancel anything else? I'm um, going numerator with denominator, yes. And we look here. And what do we see? We see four with 16. What multiple, okay, are we using apart from the two times table that we can get four and 16 coming together? And again, the students would say it is our four times table because so we can cancel this by four and so we'd cancel that by four. And again, we're saying how many groups of four can we get from four objects? And it would be one. And here again, 4 into 16, how many groups of 4 can we get? And it would be 4. Our students would have been going on their tables and saying, 4 times what would have given us 16? And right away, we see that it is 4. So what do we have after we have done all this chunking and this testing? So you write it out clearly so that you can see that after that operation, we are now left here saying it is 1 over 1 and it is times 4 over 3. And so we can now introduce what we are calling our rule that says numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So this is what we have. 4 times 1 would give you 4. 3 times 1 would give you 3. And that is our answer. We can choose to leave it as an improper fraction or we can choose to put it into a mixed fraction when we would say 3 into 4 goes once and the remainder 1 would then be put over the denominator. And that is the answer. All right, so that is what we are calling our cancelling. And teachers, notice how slowly and what time we took to show the sort of little intricacy that has to be happening and the thought process that is involved with this. We can't expect them to get it at the first time. So what do we do? We do a second example and we're doing it together. All right. At this time, we will be leading the operation because we're giving our students time to make it a part of them to see if they understand what Miss Weston just said and then to say, all right, if she works a second one, I will try and see if I can do it on my own and everything has now become a part of my body, all right? So just before we start again, this is the second one we want to look at is five and one fifth and it is multiplied by 10 over 15. We are going to be using a cancelling method to find the answer for this. Because we are saying to you, if you went straight into multiplication, numerator times numerator, our numbers may be so large that we don't want that. So we try to break it down first and we call it cancelling. As I allow you to concentrate and to get ready for how you're going to tell me what I have to do, let's give you a little time out, a little break, sip some water, sip some juice, go and call somebody and say new things on the TV and we'll be right back. Complete all readings and especially homework assignments as soon as possible after they are announced and definitely complete all assignments before new material is covered. This ensures that the information is fresh in your mind and linked to more basic concepts previously learned. 
Do your assignments early enough to allow you to get help with the things you do not understand. Right, so you're comfortably seated because we are right back and I want you to tell me what are we going to do because you're going to show me and talk to me and tell me about this operation we're calling cancelling. And this is a mixed fraction. I know you're home, you have your books, you're working with me. This is a mixed fraction and the first thing we have to do then is to turn our mixed fraction into an improper fraction. Five fives would give me 25. Remember again, it is denominator times whole number plus the numerator. So denominator multiply by the whole number and we add the numerator. Five fives, 25 plus one, 26 over five, and it's multiplied by 10 over 15. What? can we do what can we do we are looking and we're using our beady eyes okay and again we said it is numerator denominator numerator denominator or numerator denominator all right so we have a choice what can we do and yes you're going to tell me Mr. I see 10 and 15 so I know I can use my five times table so we're saying 5 into 10 all right five so it's divided by 5 this also must be divided by 5 5 into 10 would give you 2 5 into 15 would give you 3 is there anything else we can cancel? How is the cancelling going? Numerator with denominator. Is there such a prospect? Can we cancel this way? Can we cancel that way? Or can we go up or can we go down? And the answer is no. All right? Because it's never numerator and the numerator. So you can't say you see a 20, you see 26. No, that is numerator and the numerator cannot happen so we introduce then our rule it is now equal to 26 times 2 over what are we left with 5 times 3 and that would now be equal to what do we have 2 times 6 would give you 12 2 twos would give you 4 and 1 would give you 5 and so we have 3 fives would be 15 and so we have an improper fraction, or as we're going to tell our students, we can look and see. And just because Miss Weston knows her tables more than our little students, we can say that this can be written as a mixed fraction. Into this would be 3, because 3 times 15 would give me 45, and a 5 would give me 50, and a 2 would give you 52. So it's 7 over 15. And that is what we want you to be able to do as quickly as that, that you look, you bring them to the nearest 10 and we add the principle involved. So that is what we're taking you through. And we'll be leaving you with two of these. Look at them right here. All right, or else you can look in your text because by now you're looking and seeing where it says canceling and you want to give yourself a test to see if you can do that. Three quarters of 16. What does the of means? Yes, we multiply, okay? Multiplying, you can write 16 over one to give you your balance and you'll see if you can do this. And then, so that is the one for your homework, okay? And we have also given you this to test you to see what we do with this. Three and three quarters, and it's times one and three fifths, and it's times one and one eighth. And you can call these fractions now because you know the fractions get their names from the denominators, okay? The very last rule we want you to look at before you go for your Christmas vacation is that division of fractions. Why did we leave it so long? Because it is so simple. What it says, without giving you all the jargon that comes in between, is that when we are dividing, so you have 4 over 5, 4 fifths, divided by 
one and a third, it is wrapped up with the principle of multiplication. Okay? And it says, when we are dividing, so we're just giving you the rule. If you want to know why, you can come and see me. But when we are dividing, it says we use the reciprocal of the num of the fraction behind the division sign. Okay? So you would still be writing back that it is four fifth and it is times okay and then here so let's not divide as yet because we're going to show you because I use the word here reciprocal and I don't know if you remember saying or hearing that so we turn our mixed number into an improper fraction so it is three one three and one would give you four so it's four over three and what I am saying, this is new, so look at it carefully, carefully. What I am saying, for the rule for division, when we divide, we change the sign into a multiplication sign. And then we up, a nice word the little students like to use is we upturn the fraction behind the division sign. So it's 3 over 4. So it is the reciprocal of the fraction. Okay? And then we get into our cancelling. 4 into 4 goes once. 4 into 4 goes once. So we're just left here now with 1 times 3. And it's over 5 times 1. And it's equal now to 3 over 5. So we have to just remember we are turning the fraction upside down. If we had, so let's give you a second example, and then it would be two and a half, and it's divided by three and three quarters, and this is where we're going to keep our eyes, okay, because that is where the new aspect of it comes. We change our mixed numbers into an improper fraction, Two ones are two, two twos are four, and one would give us five over two. And what did we say? We changed the division sign into a multiplication sign. When we change our improper fraction, three fours are 12, and three would give you 15 over four. So our 15 over four is now turned upside down, and it is four over 15, because we're using the reciprocal of the number. And then we are back onto our canceling, which would then say two into two goes once into four two times. 5 into 5 goes once, and 5 into 15, 3 times. So we have 1 times 2 over 1 times 3, and it's just equal to 2 over 3. And that, then, is what we had to do in terms of our rule for our division. Rule for our division, the fraction behind the division sign. We change our sign to a multiplication sign, and the fraction behind gets turned upside down. Or we say we use the reciprocal of the fraction. Well, you have been on a journey with me for this term. It may feel like a marathon. I want to show teachers what is involved in terms when you say that you're teaching students fraction. It's not a two weeks thing. I'm sure we were doing a fraction for nearly a month. And we are big people, all right? You have got to take your time. Show the students what they're doing. Keep the numbers very, very small. Because at this point, there's nothing else they would ever want to learn, in, have to learn in terms of fraction from now until they die. From now until they see their first, second, and third generation. So do not go too quickly with it. Now teachers in the schools, you're going to be showing them where do we use this knowledge in terms of saying we have taught them fractions? How is it used and where is it used? Because again, as we are reminded, in today's society, people get paid not for what they know, but for how they can use what they know. And that is what we want our students to develop. And that is what we are challenged to start teaching our students. It's the Christmas season, and we are sending you home to welcome the Christ child. We need him so badly that I don't want to keep you any longer and to give you all the time you need to prepare, not for shopping, 
but just to have a quiet moment to welcome the Christ child. In the meantime, while you're waiting for him to come, there's some nice books that I know I can tell you about that you can look to get a quick revision for formers because I know you're not going to have any vacation because you're still, your teachers are working so very hard. And I have to thank all the teachers, not just mathematics teachers, but all those teachers who are taking the time out to push our students to make certain that they can realize their dreams. People don't see this because it's happening behind the scene. And in terms of education, half of us don't want to talk to say anything. But when you do something, I want the whole world to know that you do take time. You give up your Christmas vacation and you're out there working with our students. This book by Nelson Thorne that, I, that they brought here, I like it very much. It has some nice, easy little examples and quick revision stunts that you can use. Mathematics for CXC. For our little students, the, the Oxford Mathematics that you have, the Oxford Mathematics, it also has a workbook that comes with it. You can look in it and you can get some lovely example. And from any time they ask you students in school for a Christmas present, look for the Oxford Mathematics book too. And the book four will be very good and all too for you students. Start getting resources in your house for mathematics. Go to the bookstores, check and see, ask the little aunties and uncles or whoever to send some of these books for you because they are what you're calling your own resource. The best form of learning is when you teach yourself, all right? So start stocking up and having a library for yourself. And you see the old daddies, the grannies, everybody's listening now. So make certain that you do, they don't make you feel shame. In the meantime, we remember those people who will not have such a lovely Christmas because of having lost loved ones or some misfortune. We pray for them and our hearts go out to you and we are with you. I remember my friend Barbara this time and the shepherds who are now grieving and my friend Juliet. We will be with you and God will take care of you. And thank you for saying right, um, use bright colors because that is who personifies my dear sister who has gone to the great beyond. God will take care of us and we will all in due time meet in that golden arena. Pray and just keep close to God and that's all that's going to help you at this particular time now. Barbara, we're with you and you'll see me tomorrow. Again, we remember our family, Sean's family, who again will be really without a dad at the head table or the cook at the head table this time. Again too, he's with our maker and all will be well. Let us take a positive attitude. Let us remember to reflect on not just our present blessings of which every man has many, not on our past misfortunes of which all men's of which all men have some. Let us just thank God all the time and ask him to be with us and to take us safely through this journey as we try to make Mother Earth a peaceful and an easy place for us to live in. So to the nation of Antigua Barbuda, Aisha who is always here, lovely behind the scene, Jetta who is always around, Mr. Lloyd who stays far but makes certain that he has an ear on the ground and knows that everything is in order. Maggie, we miss you and hope you will be back next time. And Mr. Barnes too, who takes a keen interest in what goes on here because we aim only to produce quality work. And I have to thank again my um, computer analyst, Mr. Bramble, who is always telling me about some new aspect of how to expand the program. Antigua will be number one and not very soon, not very far from now too, all right, because we are working and with the little we have, little is much when God is in it. And therefore from the Ministry of Education and from behalf of all my other colleagues, we wish the entire Antiguan public a hearty Christmas and don't go shopping, remember the Christ child, let that be a second fiddle for you, but just rejoice and keep it a peaceful, calm nation. Have a good Christmas, everyone, and let us welcome the Christ child. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and ABS-TV.